I won again. Yes. Let's turn that off. Make sure I've got uh, Bing. You know, I won again. You know what? I almost clicked Hector. Hector Colon. I almost clicked on your name because I thought you almost had it when you got there. But uh, that film, I said it was obscure, but it's one of the best John Hurt films he ever made. It's uh, Midnight Express. If you've ever seen that, being stuck in a Turkish prison, I'm sure that's what we all need after lockdown, isn't it? But that was from Midnight Express. I told you I'm going to get him obscure. Mainly for Lou down Masso. I don't know if you're watching Lou. But uh, I thought... I'd think, think, there's, a, there's no scene in that film I could have picked where people wouldn't have got it. But uh, that one, I thought that'll do. But uh, as you can see, I've been working on my uh, jaws here. Hello, Christian from Grantham. Let's give it up big time. Hello, Christian from Grantham. Now let's get cracking. I'm waiting for everyone to say, uh, what's Midnight Express? <laughs> Looks like I've run out of Coke, so I had to have a small one tonight. It's a small one tonight. But uh, um, Phil Siegel from Sprueverse is going to be joining us later. And uh, just so you know, that's probably going to be about half eight. So Phil, if you're watching this, I will do what I did last time and I'll email you. Uh, the link, once it's generated it, uh, to come on stream. Uh, just so everyone knows, I don't know how much of the chat I'm going to be, because I've got so many questions to ask Phil since last Thursday, and ideas racking around in my mind. Basically, we're building the Great White Shark, which is here, which is a Pegasus model release. And as you can see, you've got a shark. You've got the shark cage. The shark cage is actually finished, just so you know. And uh, we've got the little diver here. Now, the diver... Uh, doesn't have his arm down like this. He's actually holding a camera. So I've put it down and I'm actually in the process of filling as you can see there at the moment. But this is the diver and he's going to be holding a rod with a little injection in there. Obviously it needs painting. But he also needs a beard, which he hasn't done. So one of the questions I'm going to ask Scoville, so you can prepare for it, is how did you put the beard on your one? Uh, but this is the cage. I'm still painting the top because I've run out of uh, uh, paint for the cage. But all of this has been um, made, a lot of people thought, from a 3D printer. But no, the only bits that's 3D printed is the bottom and the bars there and there, and the same on that side there and there. Everything else has been fabricated from the parts that we get for this. And the way that I bent all of these round and snapped them and all of that was I just got my solder and iron, stuck it between the bars and then bent them. Simple as that. <laughs> so uh, that's the shark cage, looking pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. But I've got so many ideas rushing around in my mind for this. So uh, I think it would be great for you to hear um, the inception, the, the seed of process that what me and Phil are doing. And once again, just like the ET build, it seems like we're working on the same things at the same time, which is just uncanny. And I haven't had contact with him. But uh, it's just uh, perhaps, perhaps we've now uh, linked minds. We've got some telepathic link like Vulcans or something. Uh, and as you can see, I'm wearing my, I'm sporting my new shirt, which is in my merch store here. Thank you, Howard. So you're going to need a bigger shelf. I watched <laughs> uh, the cage scene and Hooper had lost his spear before the shark got into the cage. So I'm wondering about having the spear not on the figure in mind. Yeah, the, um, uh, actually, um, a big bad donkey walloper uh, texted me today to let me know that as well. Um, I want it in there because I don't want to have a knife in there because he did have a knife and he was stabbing at it. But I don't want um, I, it, the way the hands held. I'd have to do. I mean, I could put a knife in the hand that I've now put down with this hand out. But I just think it would look more impactful to have some sort of thing in there. So um, I can't get it completely screen accurate. They are. I mean, some of the things that I have changed, just so you know, because uh, you probably can't see them. But basically, the windows at the front. Uh, on the model, there isn't any windows on this side. It's just all cages. So I've had to make these windows here. Also, the flotation tanks at the top there, they actually supposed to sit on top. But in the film, they don't. They sit lower down. So I've had to move them as well. Uh, and obviously create the floor and bend the pipe. So uh, it wasn't a little thing that we had to do with that one. But uh, all good. Derek Boyd, I have seen that the Titanic is coming to the UK, but they're just garnering interest at the moment. I'll be surprised if we see it this year, I have to say, but uh, look out for uh, 2022 for that. Um, if I don't pick up your text, I'm just going to say it again because I don't like um, not answering text. I don't like uh, not answering comments. Then uh, after half eight, it's because I'm engrossed and I think you'll see that uh, when I'm talking there. Um, and, and, and my brother's saying, just remember this build is a prelude to building one for me. What, you want a Jaws cage? <laughs> when you hear about how much the resin's going to cost, you might change your mind. 
<laughs> but uh, if anyone's interested in this merch, just so you know, I do have a store, the merch store. And look, I've linked it on the screen there. Bit.ly forward slash World of Wayne. Now, on Tuesday, I was building the X-Wing. And you'll be pleased to know that I've had the next lot of X-Wings come. So I now got... 61, 62, 63, 64, and 65, where we're finishing the wing. Not much to do on that now. And then we're doing the interior cockpit by the look of it. So that's arrived. Hopefully that will be out next week. I have got the next four issues of the Dodge Charger. So that's uh, that's on the way as well. So that will be coming next week. And uh, I, because I was so like snowed under and stuff like that, uh, let me just go back and hide this. Uh, because I was snowed under, I didn't get a chance to do merch on the map. So we're going to do that now. So merch on the map because, oh, that's the, uh, there. That's what we want, merch on the map. So we're in Corby. <laughs> I always say that, we're in Corby here. Now, uh, the first person doesn't live too far away. As a matter of fact, he lives down the road and I've actually met him in my local Asda in Frapston here. And that is Nick Barmer. So thank you, Nick, with your Ferrari F40 cap with the robots t-shirt on. You are now... On the map we're gonna go back to the map and this time we're gonna take a big jump all the way to my home country down in Oz now you'll have to help me here uh, I think you live in Logan City which is not actually so much a city as it is a pro a, like a province and it's south of Brisbane so I'm guessing there's Logan home there I'm guessing you're around this sort of area here in South Brisbane here, just around here. Uh, that is Peter Bailby wearing the face mask. <laughs> Thank you for that. You are now on the map, Peter. And then lastly, we'll go back to the map. Uh, we're going to jump back to the UK. And let's see if we can get this one. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go along the A14 from Corby. I know where I am here. To the M6. And we're going to head up to Drayton Manor, which is going to be... Let's have a look. Uh, a bit further on here. Uh, I will find you. Hang on. Stand by. I'm looking for Tamworth. It's up the M6 somewhere. Where the M6 goes into the M42. There we go. So Tamworth must be around here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> where's Tamworth? Dag damn it. There it is. Tamworth. There's Drayton Manor. So from Tamworth, we've got Nigel T there. Wearing a Let's Get Cracking t-shirt. I've been to Drayton Manor loads. I can't believe I just didn't spot that straight away. But thank you for those submissions. If you have bought any World Away merchandise, and please send me a picture so I can put you on the map. And uh, we've got quite a few now. As a matter of fact, we've got more people on the map now than we have Welcome to the Cave videos, which I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about. And uh, as I said, I do have to buy my own merchandise so I can get it in. But uh, I got this express delivery because I wanted it for Monday because Monday I'm going to be doing the Jaws video of what I've done so far. But uh, all good. Yeah, yeah. the resin's going to be three times more than the actual kit. And I think the cost of shipping for a heavy block. Yep. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yes, we get to finish the wings, Alex. I can't wait. I mean, we've done the hard work now. The pipes are done. If anyone watched the stream on Tuesday, yes, I went back and put that damn pipe in. You all knew I would. I couldn't sleep without it, so that pipe's now in. <laughs> Trouble is, you're never going to know that because uh, you're never going to see it. <laughs> so... <laughs> But I knew it was there, so I put it in. Um, which is the best Jaws movie, Wendy? The first one, by a long way, I reckon. Although I did like Jaws 2. And because it, Jaws 3 was just very strange. Because it was Jaws 3D, if you remember. And you had those red and green glasses. And uh, things just looked weird. All these, they went for an era of doing the 3D movies. Not like our 3D movies we get in the cinema now. But, you know, these red and, red and green 3D movies. And uh, it, it's impressive the first time you see it. And then uh, you lose hope of it. And then you realise the red and green washes all the colour out of the film. So uh, it was a fad at the time. But, uh, yeah, Jaws 3D. Hmm. And then less, the less said about Jaws 4, the better. I'm sure I'm sure Michael Dykel Kane needed the money, didn't he? <laughs> uh, hello, Wayne. You finally got confirmation. Fortnite that your for, uh, first Enterprise D order has shipped. No idea when you'll get it here. Funny, funny you should say that, Robert. I've had my confirmation that issue 21 of the Ecto-1 was posted out around about eight days ago, and I still haven't received it yet. But saying that, um, the... I can't remember what it was. Some, something come that I've had to wait two weeks for. 
and that's finally turned up. What am I building from Diecast Club? I'm building the Eagle Moss uh, Enterprise. I'm building the Ecto-1. I'm building something else. What am I building? Oh, the Eleanor. It was the Eleanor. The Eleanor took two weeks. So, there you go. Where are you going to build the Titanic house? No idea. By that time, hopefully I'll have the, uh, the, the workshop down the bottom of the garden extended. Where do I stand on the victory? Do you mean, where is the victory? Because I'm still waiting for PAX to arrive. I am going to be going down to Portsmouth, but uh, there's a couple of things happening in Portsmouth, and perhaps one of you can help me out. Um, John Russell in, in stream here. I, I completely... There's two Johns in Portsmouth, and I got confused. Uh, I'm getting the Sovereign of the... Uh, uh, sovereign of the Seas, isn't it? The, uh, from you, John. So I'm going to go meet you to get that. But I'm meeting another John in Portsmouth to get the victory, and I can't find the email. So if you're watching this, can you email me again so I can kill two birds with one stone when I get down there? That's when Boris Johnson lets us off our leash in May, hopefully. Uh, because we really do need a trip to the South Coast. And I need to meet Svi. Even though you'll probably be busy, but by then, hopefully, they'll let more than one person into your tattoo shop. We'll have to see. I'll get my hair cut, Svi. How's that? I'll get my hair cut, and then I can chat with you while I'm... Uh, <laughs> while I'm getting my hair cut. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, where do you stand on the victory? Um, definitely not in the place where Nelson fell, even though it's like marked with a plaque. He didn't die there, just so you know. He got shot there. He died below decks. But they do tell you that when you have the, the guided tour. But I want to go on the victory again. I need more inspiration. Uh, issue 107 to 110 of the Bismarck is delayed to the end of April at the earliest. I got that email as well, Philip. So uh, I've still got 106 to do. And if you saw that video today... Last night's stream was hard, and editing it this morning was even harder. But for all you patrons, I don't know if you've watched that video today, but I only used about six or seven camera angles from what you watched last night. All the rest of them were completely different cameras. So, uh, all good. Uh, did anyone enjoy doing the windows as much as me? Did everyone put the windows in the right way? The lefts and right and made sure the L's were all, all right. I have my L's and R's upside down, just so you know. And someone said it didn't sit flat, but mine actually did. The reason it weren't shutting was the bulb was in the way. But the um, I thought perhaps it can sit flatter. So I took them all out and turned them all around. It didn't make the blindest bit of difference. Although, if you've got left and right in the right side, that that's good. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Derek Boyd, how's it going, Derek? Uh, I thought about going back to Ecto-1, but there's so much of the interior that needs modded, so I don't know if I'll bother. The, um, well, the Honeywell 6000 you can get from part work upgrades. A lot of people have been doing upgrades for the oscilloscope. Um, uh, the carpets are brilliant. The trims, I mean, there are mods, but, you, but you've got to ask yourself. The, uh, you know, it's your vehicle, so it's how you want it to look. I mean, um, I'm going to be doing things with my Enterprise, I'll tell you now, which probably aren't specific. Specific, speci <laughs> that's another word. <laughs> Uh, to the film. It is probably not screen accurate, but I, I want it to look good. I mean, I've got to think of a way how I'm going to display it because I keep on at Mrs. World away, and I'm telling you, but uh, it's not happening at the moment. She just gives me this dead look face like this. <laughs> uh, Gary, you've had confirmation of issue 20, uh, but it's still not had 19 yet. Hope to get both next week. Hopefully, Gary. Just to remind you, if you are on the you got a free 6 and 12 month easy pay plan where you pay up front. If you're on the free month plan, I believe your next payment is due out in May, which means I think you need to call them up and arrange to get that done again. And the same when you get to 6 months and the same if you're on the 12 month plan. You have to do it every 12 months. Otherwise, they stop sending you with no notice, I don't think, because uh, that's what hit you, wasn't it, Gary, for your Ecto-1? Um, Dr. Inferno, thanks again for letting me know about what that giant metal plate was. I'm worried that Eagle Boss won't replace the missing kit or magazine. Yeah, no, I'm sure they will. There won't be a problem. The Enterprise is way too big for you to build. Well, I mean, look, the Millennium Falcon is pretty similar. The saucer section of the Millennium Falcon. I found the place for that. And if anyone's, quite a few of you have been to the Man Cave now. They, um, I've not got much space in here at all. So. Hi, Kevin. How's it going? <laughs> are you trying to get your enterprise above the tv i've been trying to get the enterprise above the t for a very long time and because it's got like two and a half years i'm wondering if i could work her down for two and a half years we'll have to see that's <laughs> i think wade needs a let's get cracking tattoo <laughs> 
I, I said, if I get another tattoo, I will be getting Svi to do it. And what I'll do, Svi, as I said, I'll, I'll let you just go to town. I think something needs to be done about this one. It's just faded too much. I'll just tell you what the theme is and see what you come up with. I'll throw the readies down and then uh, you can watch me faint and then get on with it. <laughs> it's my birthday, mate. Give me a heads up when you're coming down, mate, and I'll make sure I'm not busy. I will do. I will do. There'll be plenty of notice because I'm sure Mrs. Welder Wayne's got a, tr uh, a tour of the English Heritage and National Trust sites that we haven't been able to use for a year, but we have still paid into it. So, Can you say what oil I use to help the screws fit? A Tinkerbell is just a three-in-one oil. If you just go into Google and type three-in-one oil, it'll pick it up. Or if you go into my Amazon store, and I don't think I've got a link here to my Amazon store, it's, uh, yeah, I do. If you go to my Amazon store, bits.ly forward slash Wayne store. Oh, no, that's my merch store. No, I haven't got a link on here. <laughs> Keep showing my merch store. Um, if you go into my Amazon store, that's bit.ly forward slash world of Wayne. Or if you're in the US, add US to the end. It's in the Model Builders Emporium in there. So you'll be able to get that. Uh, uh, you've got Paul Reynolds. I hope you're talking about the Terminator. And not your your own personal issues. I've got to speak to them about my toe. One very bad sound to point. You can't hear it. What? <laughs> I'm worried now. Is it is that the Terminator or your toe? <laughs> uh, Berg, this the last shipping email I had from them was the um, for the Ecto One. But saying that, I haven't received the email for the ha uh, for any of the hash it delays. So I just naturally assume that when you guys tell me, it affects me too. So. Uh, yeah, Sve, yeah. What if the TV went on a shelf above the Spitfire? I've got too much stuff underneath the TV as well, though, Sve. I've got like the skybox under there. And you know, you know how you've got that kitchen drawer that just seems to accumulate drunken wires and bin bag liner ties and. Yeah, everyone's got like a, a, a dead battery in there. Um, I don't know, some wires, a, a screwdriver perhaps. It's, it's the junk drawer. I've got four of them under my TV. So, <laughs> hello, David. How's it going? David, I met uh, coming to the, um, use the rooms in your doll's house as shells. Uh, David, I'm glad you're on because we've been having this debate about the Spitfire. Now, I think I've made my mind up about this Spitfire. See, David said that the Spitfire underneath is definitely white and black and the early ones weren't switched. Now, this is the argument for why David is right. About five or six, perhaps seven people, including people on YouTube, cited a book about Spitfire camouflage for me and how this book is correct and this is how it is. So Hashet got it wrong. Right. They've got it right. The trouble is... They're all referencing the one source. But if you look at Google, if you look at uh, pictures, as in artwork pictures, if you look at models, and even if you look at the front page of the Hashet Spitfire, they've got it as white and black underneath with the aliens the same. So do I trust 100 sources or just this one source about camouflage? So I think Hashet have got it wrong. There, I said it. I've made my decision. <laughs> Not to say that, they, that, that the plane didn't have that. It might have. And to be honest with you, it's not worth arguing the toss over because we're never, ever going to be able to find out now. But uh, some, some planes had it. But with all the artwork, and it's not just the artwork that you see now. I'm talking about artwork that was painted years and years and years ago. They've got the colour scheme as white and black with the ailerons the same. So, but there is that Spitfire camouflage book which says different. So. <laughs> Uh, hi Phil, how's it going? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and generate a link for you in a minute. So many questions tonight, Phil. So many. <laughs> um, yes, uh, she doesn't like TVs. Where on the wall? Too much neck ache. Yeah, he's not saying on the wall. He's he's saying on a shelf. So you know. <laughs> Uh, how would I mount it? it? When she gives in, it will be mounted exactly like the Millennium Falcon there, uh, Craig. Exactly like that on 35 uh, grade monofilament line. 35 pound uh, line. Oh, really? I thought it was because uh, it ran out after 12 months. Oh, my God. That makes it worse, Gary. Oh, right. God. Well, you panic me now because I'm thinking, you know, perhaps I should call them to make sure all the payment options are right. Because I've just changed my payment options with them. So hopefully they get it right. 
skipping your messages, am I? I don't mean to. I'm just I'm just scrolling back up. <laughs> I can't see. You got to understand that I I'm getting so many messages that they just whiz past the screen and I have to physically stop the feed to see a message. Chris ask me again and I'll try and answer it. Sorry sorry about that mate. Uh I want to change the Iron Man from gold to silver. Can anyone recommend a silver sp spray paint preferred? Um I don't know Chris. I use silver chrome for C3PO's leg. That was nice. That's a quite a flat chrome. I don't know if you can see that. You can't see that. The Alcad is the nice shiny chrome there. But if you want a flat, it's quite a nice silver, if that makes sense. Are Terminator and Bismarck parts on Ever Given? What's, what's Ever Given, Spencer? I've never heard of that. Don't know. <laughs> Hello from Palm Beach. Where's Palm Beach? I should know this. Is that is that Florida or LA? Hopefully, Zanista Studios. I've got. I've actually got the right country. <laughs> I'm assuming it was America. It sounds like a Florida-ish sort of California-ish place. <laughs> Doctor Inferno, you've been itching to start the DeLorean, but I'm waiting on the mods from Chloe to show up so I could. I mean, you can get on with it, uh, Doctor Inferno, because you, the the power mod and the flux and all that is not needed till like issue forty-eight. So, I mean, there's no, nothing stopping you getting on with that. Uh, who's in charge of the lights tonight? Well, only Esther's here tonight. The kiddies aren't here till the weekend, so I pick them up tomorrow. But there is an announcement on the channel tomorrow, people, so watch out for that sometime during the day. Something new is coming. Um, patrons already know what it is. Ian knows what it is. <laughs> uh, yes, Bobby. Maybe, maybe they can. Hopefully they can. It will be mounted on the ceiling with Wayne hanging below it. <laughs> that was nasty. Ooh. <laughs> um, Alclad is an awesome paint. It is. Just look at that shine. It's still there, Svee. I'm so happy with that. And that was just like, I said that was a gloss black with just two coats of Alclad on there. Two coats. That's all it was. It was Florida. Palm Beach in Florida. There we go. I've never been there. I've been to Tampa. And I've been to Daytona, and I've been to Cocoa in Florida. I haven't been down south. My son wants to go to Fort Lauderdale. But uh, obviously with the travel bans on at the moment, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, anyone for a hash it or write about the Spitzfire t-shirt? <laughs> Long time lurker, you were, you were, you were defending hash it, I have to say. But but the, the fact is that the, all, all of the... Everyone who emailed me and sent me the same picture from the same book, that got me a bit worried, thinking it's just the one source. But if you type in Spitfire Supermarine, no, sorry, Spitfire MK1A ZPA in Google, and it will give you a whole list of reasons why that's wrong. So, <laughs> but we're never going to know. So, I, I did hear about this before I heard the Spitfires, that I, arguments are going to be caused by how many rivets there were in the windows and how many stitches there were in the leather seats. So uh, to be honest with you, I, I really don't care. I, I just think it looks good. But I uh, I do like constructive conversation. And I just think it's interesting to see different points of view. But I did learn something, long time lurker. I did learn that they were that, that, that way round. Were they on that plane? Who knows? But they were at one time alternated on the wings. So... Oh, the Ever Given. That's what you're talking about. Right, I know what the Ever Given is now. It's not stuck now. No, it, it, it got released years ago. Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago. I bet you that company get uh, a court order against them, though. I'm sure something wasn't legit there at all. It couldn't have been. Is it the leopard that I mentioned on Tuesday? It might be. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> what? John, you can, don't encourage her. <laughs> What's he going to be hanging by? <laughs> uh, Howard, here we go. How much Dolls House Models and Gifts do we need to send so Wayne can hang his Enterprise? Don't don't start that either, Howard. I mean, the, every day this week, she's had no, no less than like three or four parcels being delivered. And I'm rushing downstairs thinking the Ecto one's here or as a new build. Today, I got the X-Wing. She got four parcels, which was a nude light for her house, some fabric, um, 
I don't know. She's had loads. Oh, a thing to hang a plate on the wall. <laughs> and of course, every time that the postwoman rings or the postman, they're crying. They're like, <laughs> it's just so heavy. Please make her stop. And I'm like, but I can't. <laughs> uh, here you go. Michael, Royal Air Force Michael. There were loads of mistakes between A and B config on Spitfire, Spitfire camouflage. There you go. <laughs> I understand for a while they, they didn't have the roundels on the bottom. So that was an interesting read as well. I have done, done my reading, I have to say. Uh, would I recommend the Titanic for a novice builder? Kev, without seeing it, I can't answer that question. But for a wooden ship, it's hard. It is hard. And it's slow. And if you're doing it as a part work... I'm guessing you have to keep up with the speed of the part work. The, the luxury I've got with the Victory is I can take my time over it and come back to it uh, when I need to. But uh, you'll just get snowed under and you'll have boxes here. I mean, I'm doing the DC-3, which is actually, I find, harder at the moment out, up here. The Douglas DC-3. Um, but it's an enjoyable build. It's a very enjoyable build. Um... <laughs> really it's stuck it's stuck in an egypt port with something about a bill got to be paid <laughs> yeah but if it's in a port kevin surely they could just offload it and then keep the ship it's given a it's been given a one billion pound bill for the blockage well how are they expected to pay it if they can't get on their way obviously it's the company that have got to uh foot the bill not the ship Unless they're holding the ship to blackmail, I would have thought. God, that's... I don't know. Hello, Brian. How's it going? Subscribe to the Enterprise Build. Go to do the mods on Flashing Light Beacon. With our, which Arduino set do you use from the Amazon store? It's in my... Uh, it's actually in my store. It's just the animals... Uh, the animal? The Arduino starter kit. Or you just buy the minis. And then don't worry about it. Because eventually... I mean, I, I use... I, I use the Uno. Which looks like this. But this isn't what's going to in the Enterprise. I'm just going to use one of the minis in the Enterprise. I only use this just to test things and to make the code up for it. So. Uh, yeah, there you go. Make it your own. I might make it pink. <laughs> I said that about the Enterprise, didn't I? Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and, um, right, I'm going to generate a link, Phil, so bear with me. I've got to remember how to do this, because I'm, right, so I've got a link there, and if I go over to that, uh, stand by, um, right, so, right, how do I send that, oh, right, send, right, so I've put, a, I've sent you a, a link, Phil, okay now what i'm going to do people i'm going to go quiet for a second because i'm going to change the sound so bear with me um okay test 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 right so that's not working anymore i can get rid of that uh i'm hoping i've got the right output uh, I think I have. I'm just checking. Yeah, I think I've got the right output. And you can all still hear me, can't you? Hello, 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 hello. Yes, you can hear me. Cool. Right. We've got Phil here. Uh, <laughs> and we've got loads and loads of questions. Now, I have changed the overlay for this. So hopefully this is going to work. But I'm going to bring Phil in and we'll see if it does. Wow. Look, we fit perfectly in there. <laughs> I can't hear you. What's going on? You can't hear me? Uh, can you hear uh, Phil? I can I hear you. What's going on? Uh, test, 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 test. Oh, no. I can hear you. Uh, stand by. Stand by. Hang on. You're loud and clear. Uh, Hang on, stand by. Hello, can I hear you yet? Hello. Yeah. Oh, that's better. I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> cool. How are you going? 
I'm great. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Look, we both got our shark shirts on. Yeah. I've been have I've been having fun with Jaws. As a matter of fact, it's been taking up every waking hour when I'm not making videos yeah. because my mind has just been playing havoc with me. So I think the first thing we've got to do is because it's like Jaws talk or you know Great White Shark is I'm going to change the overlay, even though this looks really pretty here, uh, to something a bit more uh, topical. There we go. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so there we go. So we've got the, the great white. I can't believe now, that's worked. That's now brilliant. you're going to pay, pay attention to its painting, uh, its markings, and uh, you know oh, how it. Yeah. Have you have you started painting yours yet? I have not. Um, I uh, it, it's primed. It's all puttied and primed. But um, unlike you, though, I have not put the jaw on the bottom of it yet because I wanted to get the uh, the paint the inside of the the tongue and the mouth and all of that. Um, and then I'll, I'll I'll apply it and then uh, bung something in there so it doesn't get paint in it. But um, no, because tomorrow my uh, two gallons of resin are arriving and uh, I'm going to do a test on the other head that we got. And um, uh, I've, I've, I've been doing mountains of research. Uh, I was on the... Um, I was actually on the phone yesterday with a dear friend of mine uh, at PB Models in the UK, Anthony Sibley. If you don't know his his work, is fantastic. Um, and uh, anyway, he gave me an hour tutorial on resin. I mean, I uh, uh, I, I, I will caution us though, um, because um, here, what's the correct word? Oh, exothermic. Yeah. So the exothermic reaction on this vinyl uh is it doesn't take much that's what's scaring me so uh we're gonna see but i'm gonna do a test so the answer to your question is no i have not started painting well the, the reason i ask is because i mean i mentioned it on the patreon show i'm colorblind and i right. can't tell what gray this is if, what blue gray it is what because i don't uh, have okay. a clue so, so the nearest i can tell uh in tamia anyway it's the uh um l uh, l n gray it's the dark L N gray from Tamiya. Right. Okay. Um, um, I can give you if I, if I, um, I I'll, I'll email you the exact color. Okay. And then, and then for the the belly, um, it's going to be a very 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 light gray with uh, mostly white, uh, and I'm going to use a, a light gray from. Um, from Vallejo for that, and I'll send you the colors, yeah. uh, but that needs to be mixed down. So it's the the two colors are really that darkish gray and the white. And the key to it is is to get that dark gray on so that you can play with the belly because then the the shark will. That's really what pop. I was actually planning to actually paint the whole thing that dark oh, gray and then add the white too. over the top so I can get that nice line with a brush to actually make it so it's not straight but it's it's quite defined that line in there. And with the oh, mouth, yeah. I'll be airbrushing inside the mouth anyway, so right. I should be able to get right down to its gullet sort of thing. Yeah, but, I mean, you at won't the see moment, it there very much anyway. At, at the moment, I've been using uh, this stuff. This is brilliant stuff if everyone's used it. It's plastic putty from Vallejo. Yeah. And that's been uh, just filling out the seam, so i just got to sand them down. Then I'll prime mine. Uh, your diver. How, how yes. did you make the beard? <laughs> So the beard, um, I used something from testers called dimensional paste. Um, um, uh, testers has it or, or you can use a little bit of caulking too uh, because it, it washes up, cleans up with water. it's just a, it's a little paste of the jar testers set up dimensional paste and I use that for the beard because the beard is not very pronounced it's not a little kind of just you don't see it in any way we're, we're, having, we're having internet gremlins at the moment one second I'm going to see if I can tidy that up at my end here <laughs> one second oh okay the um but yeah so the diver i haven't even started on the only other thing is he's got this little tab at the back and i don't know what that's for because so the back there's a clip a little clip that came with the kit and the idea is that that clip uh, it allows you to hold the back of the cage Right. To hold okay. it in the cage. Uh, we'll have to f find some other way to, to hold it in the cage. I suspect, though, now that we've buckled the bars of the cage, uh, we, we should be able to hold it to the back of the cage, which is a little bit of glue. Right. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, because I said yeah. I buckled the cage with uh, a soldering iron there. Yeah, so excellent. Nice, 
nice and bent. What I was yeah. going to do was I was going to use that tab to actually attach it underneath this pole here, and it'll still be hidden, and uh -huh. there'll be pins. But basically, the diver is going to be glued into that, which is going to be glued onto his head, so it's going to be one piece. Right. But the other thing, you, the other thing you can do too is just with a little bit of heat, that plastic will melt it to the to the bars if you want ah, to right. hold them on that way. I didn't try that. For anyone was wondering about the other uh, the other head, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Because I I actually made that gap with that head there. So. So what I did was I'm using um, I'm using du Dupacolor's plastic adhesion promoter. Right. Okay. So I'm spraying the vinyl with that. Um, and the idea is, is it only takes two or three minutes and then you put down your primer cup and it will bite in, it'll allow it to bite in, in, into it. So you don't get any peeling and it really, it really works really well. Uh, and then once your primer is on, then you can go to town on your colors. So I have put in a, uh, on the test piece, I've put the adhesion promoter on first, yeah. then a coat of my primer and then a coat of white, just just for the purposes of testing it and that's going to go in a jar a glass jar and i'm going to fill it up quite quickly deliberately because yeah. it's not i'm not going to use a big jar just to see what what the reaction is yeah. because we we think it'll be okay but there is a concern that um it, it, this this particular type of plastic might not like the exothermic reaction of resin okay well i've I, i'm actually going to be doing the same thing with the head but I'm, I'm adding some things to it. I'm adding this little frog that I got in Caster in 2019. It's sitting on a rock here. And the reason for that is because have you measured the dimensions of what the mold would need to be? Well, um, I, I have a, uh, uh, I have a uh, confession to make. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not going to use a mold. All right, okay. <laughs> I'm going to use an aquarium tank. Ah, Okay. A, a, a small glass aquarium tank. And now it's a nine gallon tank. Now it's, it's, we've gone to the five gallons. I've now gone to nine gallons. Um, because uh, I want to put sand at the bottom of it and I want to put a, a, a terrain at the bottom of this thing. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling like. Um, uh, it's going to be really difficult. We've we've looked at acrylic sheeting here, half inch acrylic sheeting, cutting it and doing all that stuff, and then I've got to polish and sand the outside of it, and I I don't have the skill for it, or I'm concerned that I don't think I'm going to be able to get there. So I'm going to pour it into a glass aquarium and leave it in the glass aquarium, um, and it's uh, and it, the the cool thing about that is is we can build it in a box. Uh, and then light the bottom of it the, under the glass. And uh, I've already done a test. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you free reign to do the same thing. Right, okay. But this is, this is so scary because, like, you remember I said we shared the same brain? Yeah. Right? Okay, this is this is the what I've done. I'd already measured it. For, for, uh, 35 centimetres by 35 centimetres by at least 25 centimetres high. Yeah. Okay. Now I was uh, I was going to use a fish tank just like you, <laughs> so I had already got it lined up, ready to do. But yeah. there's a company in Norwich in the UK which actually make specific cases for this, and for twenty five pound I can get those exact dimensions. Perfect. So I was like, okay, so we've got the mold sorted out, no problems. Now the mold is acrylic, but uh, with a release agent in there, it shouldn't be a problem. The no. problem is that when I did the calculations, about thirty kilograms of resin, I think it equates to. That's 30 litres, because that's what it would hold, that's about four and a half stone. So I need to I need to lighten the weight. So just like you, I was going to put a base in it, which is on plywood with yeah. clay on top, then sand. <laughs> so this is what I mean. It's all, all sorted. Then getting some coral features and some plants. Because if you remember, when he drops that um, rod, it doesn't yeah. take long to actually go down to some rocks onto the bed. No. And I've been watching tutorials how to make sand at the bottom because you can't just pour resin on sand because it bubbles up. So it will cause bubbles all over the place. So what you need to do is uh, stick the sand to the clay and then apply resin on top. So you've actually got that base drop in to put the pores in. Now, I don't think you can pour it all in one go. I think you can only do about an inch at a time, wait four hours, then do the next layer. Yeah, now, uh, so, huh, <laughs> there are a myriad of resins out there, um, and uh, we want the coolest exothermic um, uh, 
uh, temperature we, we can, right? As, as I understand it, the quicker the pour, the hotter uh, mm -hmm. the resin will get. And the, the thicker the pour, the hotter the resin will get. So um, I found a company in Florida that's shipping me uh, something called Deep Pour Crystal Clear. And it's a one-to-one -one resin. Mm -hmm. Bloody expensive, though, I have to tell you. I mean, uh, that, that, that's why uh, if, we, if we're not going to continue, you know, that, it's perfectly... No, 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 because no, I, I, I've sold that problem. I think it's about, for the same amount, it's about £250 here. I'll say it at okay. the start of the stream. Uh, uh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you probably do better. So anyway, um, uh, this is coming, and he says, he, he guarantees me that I can pour it up to a half an inch of this. In four to six hours, I can do the second pour and, and keep on going uh, after that. As long as it stays tacky, uh, I, I, I'm going to um, I'm going to be okay. I think, and that we won't have uh, that um, that separation. Um, you know, the delamination, as yeah. it were, of the, of the levels. Uh, but apparently, you get you get this this lines anyway. So your idea about going from dark to light uh, is a really good one. And if we have a light underneath to really push the light into it, I think it it, it should be spectacular. No, it, it sounds good. With that, with that though, you got to remember that if it's every four hours, that's two days worth of getting up every four hours to put the next. Oh yeah, in. no, 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 no. It's a week. <laughs> I, I, I'm calculating. You got a week. <laughs> a week. I think it's oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh Sleepless no, no. It, this is a bloody nightmare. I mean, I <laughs> never again. You, you've got to stop me when we say no. We're not doing that. We have to go. We're going to go it's, do something else. Well, you challenge me now, so it's like, well, you've thrown the gauntlet down. I'm going to do it, whether it kills me. So, oh, it's awesome. The the only thing is, uh, when I was bending my bars, I used just a little bit of heat from a um, from a you know from a, a starter, a clicker starter, yeah. you know, just a little bit, just a little bit, and it went so fast. Yeah. So it doesn't take an awful lot of heat uh, on the on the bars of that cage. Do we know uh, what so, sort of temperatures this resin gets to? Well, uh, according to the according to the manufacturer that I'm I'm using, um, it, it will it will get up to anywhere between um, or in Fahrenheit, somewhere about uh, ninety to one hundred and twenty degrees. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think if the pour is slow and mm -hmm. it's spread out, apparently it, it, it doesn't have that, that super heat, that yeah. super concentration. And that's what we're looking for. Something with a very cool, you know, temperature. Now it, it may well be that we need to go slower on the pores yeah. so that we don't create that heat because... <laughs> They could end up with a, just a puddle of plastic. <laughs> It'd a be a very beers. expensive rock. <laughs> well, this be, uh, the drama involved in this is uh, you have no idea. The, the other thing that I was planning, I said, apart from the sand, the coral, the plants, is uh, you can get uh, a, a chicken syringe injector which injects uh, flavors into the chicken. They've got a long needle, really, really fine. Um, you can put that in there and actually artificially create tidy bubbles. So you can have... The bubbles coming out from the diver as in panicking yeah from the regulator yeah so that's that's something i was going to do as well but you know it, it's it, it, it's hilarious because now that I, I i've got a master's degree in the scene from the, from the movie now and it is hilarious how terrible it is i mean <laughs> you know they threw out all continuity on this bloody <laughs> thing i mean it's bent from both sides it's bent from the back there's no bars in one uh they use a, a little person uh because i don't think it's politically correct to say midget anymore is it yeah. uh, uh they have a, use a little person in in a in a cage that they shot down in australia with a you know 14 foot great white uh for and there's one piece that's still cut in the movie uh of that um and it doesn't match any of it and then <laughs> what one of the cameras straight up you can see you can actually see the um uh you know the surface of the water i estimated they were in about 12 feet of water yeah, it couldn't have been deep because as i mentioned when he drops that it doesn't go down far but when you look <laughs> up at the cage it's quite <laughs> so it's like okay <laughs> yeah so i, I kind of just threw my hands up and said you know what this could be whatever we want it to be it's scrum <laughs> now your cage how did you do your bars did you do them the same as i've done around here identical yeah uh, oh, right. and it 
It's about, uh, and I did, I squatted mine down again. I made it even smaller uh, <laughs> because I wanted the scale of the shark to be as big as possible. Yeah, because I, I had to actually 3D print these, these bars here because I didn't have the thickness of those bars there. So okay. I 3D printed the bottom, but I had to redo these. If you remember, the first picture I showed you, these were a lot smaller where I cut them yeah. from one of the cage. Uh, I didn't like that, so I had to go right. for that. But it's painted now, but I did run out of paint. So I've... Uh, that, oh, okay. And, and the red for the Explorers Fun the Road has all gone as well. So that, <laughs> the Tamiya lacquer paints are brilliant, but they don't last very long. They don't give you much in there at all. Uh, but you can thin them with, uh, not the thinner, but the lacquer thinner that comes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can that. thin them almost 50-50. As long as it's a very light spray, you can get a, quite a bit out of it. Yeah, I think the problem I've got uh, with the Explorer's uh, ship is that I use different primer coats. I had a grey primer coat for the frame, but I used a black gloss for the metallic, and it's just taking uh, forever to get rid of that black. That's why it's got a very brown look at the moment. So I'm just gonna have to Yeah, it looks it. great, though, by the way. I, I, I love those files. I'd love to build that. Yeah, well, I said that he keeps sending me new ones. I don't know if Jeff Fink's in here at the moment, but uh, he, he does watch the live stream. But he sent me uh, one of the sites is meant to be corrugated, so he sent me the files to make it corrugated. Oh, it's great fun. What a great, what a great piece to have. No, it is. So uh, I, I'm guessing, Jeff, if you're watching this, you must be some sort of 3D modeler. If you've got other film like tie-ins and stuff, then please let me know because uh, very interested in your work. Absolutely yeah, great brilliant. fun. Really so what's, fun. What you got planned next for your jaws then? So, um, I'm going to do my test. Uh, hopefully, my resin comes tomorrow, and I will do my test. And I'm going to start painting the shark. Um, um, so, that, that should take me several days, two or three days, I would imagine, to get the shark all painted up. Um, I'm going to leave the diver until last, because yeah. it's going to take a steady hand and a lot of detail work, I think, to, to get that right. You know, Now, um, his wetsuit is black, but it's got a, a dark blue sleeves right uh in in the so just for you for you for your reference to help you and um the the, yeah. the tank is silver now the other thing that's really interesting in the movie is his uh respirator um um is actually uh it's cabled to his uh his right over his right shoulder directly into the tank it doesn't go into that piece that's molded onto the oh, uh, right. uh, okay uh, yep onto it uh, it's a it's a different setup but it doesn't matter what i did was i took a little bit of wire just a little uh -huh. bit of black wire and i uh, i clipped off uh the the piece from the from his uh, rest regulator and uh i i drilled a little hole and i connected that to the top of the tank it looks pretty good just 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 so people are aware the regulator actually it, it goes in like a doll's dummy you see, right. he's got this big tube here that you push into his mouth. Right. Which is, uh, I just it's... trimmed mine a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it goes right down his throat rather than his mouth. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought I thought I was going to I thought I was going to lose this, but uh, I keep it in there. But I think I'm going to do the same thing. I, I do need to get a beard on him, and I, yeah. I want to try and figure out if I can do the beard just to make some hair whispering upwards, because uh, rather than flat. So. So here's know. another here's another thing I wanted to bring up to you because I think it's kind of important. So there's two moments in the in, and and I think one of them is more dramatic. Uh, but I see what you think. Mm -hmm. So um, I built um, and I have it on my Instagram, I think. Uh, but I, I built the uh, the shark um, uh, uh, the stick, the shark yep. shark stick. You know. So in the in the film, the way that the way it goes is there's a close up of his hand removing the cork from the top. As he removes from the cork from the top, he gets hit, uh, and then it swims away. And the next time it comes back, it actually bashes it from the back, and the whole scene turns, actually, which is kind of weird. Um, but um, we're, we've come to the scene where he's turned to camera, so we're correct in terms of where the bars are. However, here's the bit I wanted to ask you, because the next thing that happens is he loses his stick, as you know, and it drops to the bottom of the, o of, of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Then he pulls out his knife and he starts stabbing the top of the shark. Mm -hmm. Now I thought it might be fun if we can get a, if we can get some kind of a knife in his hands, we will put the uh, put the actual shark dart in the in the in the diorama, but have it already on the ocean floor, but sticking up. Yeah, that could be good. Yeah, and, and then we can we can 
put blood on the top of his uh, uh, on the top of his head is more dramatic if the top of his head is all bloody and 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 he's atta- you know he's jabbing at it. I don't know what you think. No, I like the idea of that. As a matter of fact, it was mentioned tonight. Oh, Jeff is here. Jeff Jeffrey's in chat. Hiya, Jeffrey. We're chatting about you again. Um, it's mentioned tonight, and actually, someone texted me today. A uh, big bad donkey walloper. He texted me to say he didn't actually have it at the scene that we're doing. So I said that. Do do we want to make it that graphic? And everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> more, more blood. And all that. I've already planned to have um, the latex gloves that I use for the blast bags for the uh, Bismarck. If you yeah. cut them into little squares, you don't really have to do much. They look like flesh. And you can just stick them in between the teeth and they look uh, pretty oh, good. But by great. then, it, I don't think he's at anything. But obviously for the past victims, he, he did have flesh in the mouth. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, they've got <laughs> blood all over his jaws. I mean, it's quite graphic. Um, and, you know, somebody who looks close up at this, it's, it's quite a graphic moment. But I think it's fun because it's right out of the film. It's that moment in time uh, that's been captured on film. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, no, definitely. So, uh, But that's that's what I'm going to be planning to do. I don't think I'm going to be doing my resin pour next week, as in the test, probably be the week after for that. I am going to okay. get to work on doing the painting and stuff like that, but I'll be interested to hear how you get on and the trials and tribute. Because to be honest with you, as I said in chat, I've learned more from people's failures on YouTube, and I'm glad right. they put them up as failures because I can see what not to do, especially about the sand, because I was just ready to put a bit of sand in and put resin on it. And it it just comes up it's like it's still viscous like water so it rises and creates bubbles right now i did i did get crushed volcanic rock for mine uh uh-huh. but uh, it's got a little more of density to it but yes it, it, it does need to go um in in a bed of clay or in something to hold it down for sure it needs to be pre-glued everything needs to be pre-glued before you start yeah. the pour but uh uh, what's going to be really interesting is is just to, to see whether or not uh, we can survive the, the the heat of the resin with this type of plastic. I, I don't well, know. I, I think if it's over the surface area with uh, an inch or half inch pore, I can't see it generating that much heat. It's just going to work like a radiator and just radiate upwards anyway. I think, I think the biggest worry I've got is that... Um, every four hours if we say we're doing a pour every four hours then the weight of that pour is going to be on the other one and if it's gel like it's okay but we're going to need to fix these in place which means these are going to be hanging i know they'll be gluing but they'll be hanging by structures above your tank as well i guess by some monofilament or something well yeah i'm gonna what we're gonna do what i'm gonna do is you you just need a a little rod a piece of wood or something to go across the top of the of the of the mold or or the tank and uh just some wire to hold it because once the pour is halfway up the tank it's not going anywhere and then you can just cut it and remove it the question the question i i I have is um because i was planning on putting a glass rod on uh on my shark yeah uh, but um I, I've been told I don't have to do that. that I if don't I, think, yeah, I wasn't planning yeah. to do that on mine. Yeah. No, I, I, if I if I pour to a certain, you know, but what I'm trying to do is get him in, in a certain orientation in the tank. And I'm concerned that if I'm pouring at a certain level that um, I, I'm not quite sure. I guess what I could do is tie some wire to his jaw and hang that above as well just to get him in the right orientation. And of course... Once the poor comes up and holds him, he's held anyway. Yeah, I think that's going to be a fun time when we're filming that, but it'll have to be one of those uh, sped up films if it's going to take a week to pour. Oh, 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 this is good. This is, this is turning into Gone with the Wind, that's for sure. Oh, no, it's crazy. But no, it's, it's a challenge. And I said that uh, once this is painted and I've got the resin, I'm confident, then it's it's a whole new branch and avenue. Of, I'll probably make start making resin jewellery or something after this. Cause, oh, uh, no, it's, it's going to be awesome. I have been assured, though, that the acrylic paint, as long as you use the adhesion promoter, the, yeah. they're, they're, we're not going to have any issues with the paint. It's not going to oh, right, okay. peel or, or come off. I think we're going to be fine there. That's not our issue. Our only issue is going to be the chemical reaction with the resin. Other than that, I think we're looking at a, a pretty spectacular build. The, the only other thing I was going to do is your stuff now, is it called Solaris with the UV? Stuff? Yes, Solaris. I was going to use that to make a wave effect on top. I've yeah, that's a, good, of, yeah. that's a good one. That, that'll work really well. So will cr- crystal clear caulking for a, a, a bathtub um, will work as well. Uh, and then you can actually use, uh, there's something from, uh, it's called water effects. Uh, and that comes from the same company that we used in the previous diorama, you know, for for, for trains and stuff yeah. like that. 
um, it, uh, water effect. So it comes with uh, the clear, and it also comes with the white to represent the ripples or you know, the right. froth from the waves. I will, I will definitely have a look at that. I think the uh, the only other thing that I've, uh, <laughs> I, I am planning is that um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to mount it, uh, as I said, on top, but I am going to use monofilament. I'm going to use uh, the line that's actually holding this up. But okay. when you mentioned about the temperature, I think that's still going to be okay with that because that's. Uh, I think I, I, I don't think you'll have an issue. I mean, the, the the thing that I was always nervous about is having it in the perfect position because yeah. once you start pouring, um, I, I know we got a little bit of time to start adjusting, but I've got to figure out how to make sure that it doesn't move. Um, well, well, for me, as I said, with that, with with the price of the resin, is by by making that base, making the the coral reef, if you like making the plants i'm hoping it, it takes off a lot of that area away so a full 30 oh, kilograms well. isn't going to be used so You're right. uh, that's a lot of resin <laughs> oh yeah no 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 absolutely yeah, i yeah, understand can... this stuff's quite toxic as well <laughs> oh um well uh, yeah you want to pour pour it in a ventilated area this is the other thing too um the mix is critical uh it's got to be I, i'm going to get a, a a baking you know a spatula like a rubber spatula uh yeah. baking spatula that can very slowly s uh stir it so once it's mixed in thoroughly they say for about three minutes give it about a minute and then do one more stir before you pour because if you do anything too erratic you, you create all kinds of bubbles and problems in in, in the <laughs> resin Oh God! Well, oh we yeah, food for thought. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely. I'm going to be very busy this week. I mean, with what was Spitfire this, and I just got an email from Eagle Boss. <laughs> They're sending me 15 issues of Build the DeLorean. Oh wow! God, you are very busy. Uh, what, <laughs> what issues are they? Are they start the starting ones or? Uh, I did. I, I they sent me one through four, and then they stopped oh. four months ago. So this is going to take <laughs> me all the way up to seventeen. I think I don't know where that is, but oh, you'll have fun. Just remember, the MM screws are going to break on you, no matter what you do. Okay. <laughs> All right, Phil, listen, thank you so much for that. You've filled of me course. in, and now I know I'm, I'm back on track with what I'm doing here. Now so, you're looking uh, at, We are like, we're always so, it's, it's fine. Yeah, I think, I think we, we've become symbiont. We're sharing the same brain now. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, listen, thank you so much, Phil, and take care. Okay, all right, be <laughs> well. Bye-bye. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that, people. <laughs> I really did. It's answered a lot of questions. So I'm sorry that I, um, I didn't answer any in chat. I didn't actually see the chat. But the, uh, as you saw, the biggest problems we're going to have is that there's a lot of resin there, 30 kilograms. By filling out the tank that I'm putting them in, I'm hoping that's going to reduce that vastly because uh, I'm going to have like a great big solid coral section. The sand's going to take up a lot. As a matter of fact, it's only 20 centimeters from the bottom of the shark to the top of the cage. So depth wise doesn't have to be too big, but it does have to be those two 35 centimeters, which is going to be the fun. So... Uh, it's fun. <laughs> and obviously, I, I wasn't aware. I knew that it heated up, but I didn't know the heat might cause a problem with this. So I'm going to be watching Phil's channel uh, with a lot of interest because the last thing we want is to paint all of this, uh, only for it to warp and, uh, you know, all the bars that we've bent to start melting and going all over the place. Um, it's, uh, it, it's a worry. And as I said, it would be an expensive paperweight if, if it doesn't work out. So uh, do you own 4K Jaws? Uh, a Blu-ray, is it worth it? Cinema? I've got just the 1080p of Jaws. As I did mention to Phil in the last last stream, I did, I've did. i seen uh, the Jaws version with all the cut bits in it back from when it was on Laserdisc. They did like a, a Criterion collection of it, which had all of those scenes in. Um, I think that's what it was called, actually, the Criterion collection. Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, just like Phil, I've been watching it again and again. And, and you are right what people are saying about he did drop the thing. And Phil's idea is absolutely perfect about that rod being in the sand. So it's telling the story that he dropped the rod and now he's got the knife, which of course means now I've got to fabricate a knife, put scars in the top of uh, young Bruce's head here and uh, think of a nice colour for blood. And then perhaps try and inject, using that injector with the uh, bubbles, perhaps try and inject a tiny bit of colour in there to make blood, I don't quite know how I'm going to do that yet. It's uh, going to be pretty crazy. 
But Jeffrey, I don't know if you saw, because um, I was talking, I, I, I printed the corrugated side, I fitted it, I just need to paint it on the Explorers. I haven't done that yet, so I need to do that. Just so you know, Jeffrey, I'm printing it 146%. So the decals, I will print um, uh, bigger to do that. The thing that I haven't figured out is how I'm actually doing the decals. I understand you can get some printable decal paper, so I can cut them out and then they slip and slide off. But uh, I don't know. haven't figured that one out yet. But uh, I want to get the painting right first. I'm glad also on your model, Jeffrey, that you've already got the lines in for me to put the lights in, which is brilliant as well. So uh, that's saved a hell of a lot of uh, time. The thermal reaction... With some resins, it's quite surprising. I had a bit from my 3D printer on my hand once. Hit it with a UV torch by accident. It, really? Oh, my God. Uh, I, I mean, resin's not to be mucked around with by the sound of it. I, I, I think I've, I've gone into this a little bit blasé and not realising. That's why, I mean, just like Phil, I'm going to be glad to do some of these test pours. Mrs. Rolder Wayne's going to get a whole new collection of paperweights, that's for sure. So <laughs> Yeah, I think the needle syringe is what I use. The um, I, I said I've got the syringe. I need a syringe with a long needle, and that's why I mentioned the chicken, the chicken ones that you can inject flavour into them because they're quite, quite long. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, Killer, I'm waiting for issue 21. A lot of people have got theirs now, and I haven't received mine, so I'm waiting for that to come. But I don't know when that's going to be here. So uh, that and make sure you fill up the shark with resin or something resistant, so you don't trap fumes and such, and cook it from the inside. That's true. I think the other thing is. Um, I mean, will it be buoyant? Because if it, I don't want air bubbles in there, then an air bubble come out of the mouth, and then you'll have this giant bubble in there. So, you are right. I will, I will fill the shark of resin before we go. So, wait until the resin starts to congeal. Think about kinetic sand. I will message your Instagram uh, of what you need to know. Thanks, Cammy. That would be that would be perfect. Um, I, I have got some ideas for the sand. So, but I, that's mainly just from watching YouTube videos today. But, uh, and thank you, Barry, for liking my T-shirt. It's very much appreciated. Time has gone like a blink tonight. I cannot believe how quick it's gone. So, listen, thank you for joining me and Phil. Remember, Phil's over on the Sprueverse channel, so you can check him out uh, on his channel. I have got a link uh, to Phil on Sprueverse, which is here. This is his web link. And I've also got his Instagram link here. But all of those links are on the overlay anyway, so you can see what he's getting up to. On Instagram, he's regularly updating that as well. Uh, but as I said, tomorrow, I have got an announcement uh, for a new build, which is coming out. So you'll be able to see that tomorrow. I'm not quite sure when that's going to be coming up. But uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. And uh, <laughs> seeing me fanboy over a model, which uh, I only found out I was building last Thursday. <laughs> it's all good. Anyway, listen, take care, everybody, of yourself and of each other. See you later.